Thamesmead must surely be one of the largest populated areas of London to have no rail connection. Now why is that? When the community of Thamesmead was being planned in the 1960s, it was intended to be a vision of the future, a new town that would give its residents everything they needed, from housing, to employment, to education, to shopping, to healthcare. It didn't quite work out like that. I made a video looking into exactly what went wrong with Thamesmead, using much of the same footage, thank you B-roll. But the long and short of it, for the subject of this video, is isolation. Many of the facilities promised never materialised, so people needed to go elsewhere for work, shopping and anything else that they couldn't get on this oversized housing estate. The promised new roads, including a possible bridge across the Thames, were never built. To make things worse though, Thamesmead was built in an era when public transport was going out of fashion particularly with the Conservative Party which was in charge of the Greater London Council, which planned these kinds of things. The original master plan included a station to the east of Plumstead. However, car ownership was on the rise and Britain had just closed literally thousands of miles of railway. Both of these trends would of course come back to bite us in the fundament, but when the time came to make cutbacks to the original plan, getting rid of the station was an obvious choice. As a consequence, Thamesmead has no direct rail connection to the outside world. The nearest station is Abbey Wood, about a mile away. For decades, for about as long as the community has existed in fact, there have been calls for a rail link, yet one way or another it just hasn't happened. The first suggestion came in 1973, not long after Thamesmead had been completed. At this point, the first stage of the Jubilee Line from Stanmore to Charing Cross was under construction. Actually, at this point it was known as the Fleet Line, but details, details. From here, the plan was to extend it east to Fenchurch Street. From there, the original Phase 3 would have gone under the river to Surrey Keys and headed to Lewisham. But by 1973, priorities had changed. The Docklands of London were in terminal decline, and thought was being given to regeneration. Therefore, a new route was suggested for the fleet line, which would drive it across the Isle of Dogs, then it would divide in two. One branch would go up to Barking, and one branch would go down to Thamesmead. The idea was revised in 1974, and a new route was suggested. This was known as the River Line, and would have gone to St Catherine's Dock, Wapping, Surrey Docks North, Millwall, North Greenwich, Custom House, Silvertown, Woolwich Arsenal, Thamesmead East, Thamesmead Central, and Thamesmead West. But by 1979, when the first phase of the line was opened, Thamesmead was no longer being considered as a future destination. But the idea didn't completely die. When the line was finally extended, opening in 1999, the extension was carried out with substantial investment from the developers of Canary Wharf. Instead of running to Fenchurch Street, it ran south of the river via Waterloo and London Bridge. But something interesting happens just beyond Bermondsey. Surrey Keys was Surrey Docks on the old plan. Canada Water is more or less exactly where Surrey Docks North was on the last plan. Canary Wharf isn't far from the proposed Millwall. And then there's North Greenwich, after which it zooms up to Stratford. And I'm going to ignore all the stations in between. In other words, for part of this route it follows the alignment of the 1974 proposal. But what's really interesting about this, at least if you're a tube nerd like me, is that North Greenwich Station was designed with the possibility of being a junction station. In other words, it was in theory possible to build the rest of the line to Thamesmead. It would have made use of the part of the North London line that ran to North Woolwich, which at that point was very much on life support. That being said, it's been over 20 years now. When it hopefully opens, Crossrail will cover a route via Canary Wharf, Custom House and Woolwich, terminating at... Abbey Wood. As the showman said, close but no cigar. And since Crossrail is using the aforementioned part of the North London line, it seems unlikely that Thamesmead will ever get its Jubilee Line station. But there's another possibility. 
In autumn 2022, the overground station at Barking Riverside is scheduled to open. This is an extension of the Gospel Oak to Barking line to serve the Barking Riverside development. Transport links were a necessity for planning permission to be granted for a development on this scale. But the possibility has been left open to extend this across the river to Abbey Wood, calling en route at Thamesmead. This has a lot of advantages. Rather than simply being at the end of a line, Thamesmead would become one stop on a potentially very useful route. Residents would get easy access to Crossrail, to the Docklands, and to North London, and, at last, a route across the Thames. But the big disadvantage is cost. A railway is an expensive thing to build, and a river and marshland pose particular problems if you're planning to build a tunnel. By 2019, the proposal had been shelved in favour of extending the Docklands Light Railway instead. Actually, the concept of extending the DLR to Thamesmead is not entirely new. In 2003, a plan was put forward to extend the DLR to Dagenham Dock. This would have diverged from the current railway at Galleons Reach, calling it Beckton Riverside, Creekmouth, Barking Riverside, Goresbrook, and finally Dagenham Dock. Also at Beckton was going to be a new river crossing, the Thames Gateway Bridge, whose southern end would be in Thamesmead. The bridge would have incorporated space for a DLR line. However, in 2007, the bridge concept was dropped. Due to various concerns regarding local opinion, the environment, traffic flow, and the dreadful cost of it all. In 2008, the DLR extension was also cancelled. In 2005, the DLR reached Woolwich Arsenal. Originally, there was a passive provision for this to be extended further east to Thamesmead, but again, this doesn't appear to be under consideration at present. In 2012, the Galleons Reach crossing was proposed. This would have been a ferry more or less following the route of the bridge and replacing the Woolwich ferry. Then the proposal evolved into a road tunnel and a DLR tunnel, and finally seems to have been, yes, once again, dropped. In 2018, TFL suggested a high-frequency bus route from Abbey Wood connecting with Crossrail. However, at the same time, they revived the idea of a DLR extension. This time, it would, again, diverge at Galleon's Reach. But this time, it would go south with new stations at Beckton Riverside and Thamesmead Central, with the possibility of extending further to Abbey Wood or even beyond. This remains the favoured option. The DLR offers many cost advantages over the underground, the overground, or the inevitable joke about wombling free. It's light rail, the clue is in the name. That means smaller tunnels and lightweight infrastructure and rolling stock. However, as of late last year, the situation appeared highly dubious. TFL maintains that the project is in its preliminary stages, but TFL is currently in a rather dire financial state, which makes it seem unlikely that it will be built any time soon. And that's more or less where we are now. In 2019, a regeneration programme was begun in Thamesmead to build over 11,500 new homes. In all honesty, I think Thamesmead has the potential to be a very nice place to live. It's away from the hustle of the city, it has plenty of water and green space, and it's very pedestrianised. But unless transport links improve, unless there is easy access to mass transit and a river crossing, I feel that it's destined to be a half-hearted regeneration at best. If you don't mind me getting on my soapbox for a bit, I find it frankly astonishing that we can build railways for new developments at Canary Wharf, Barking Riverside and Battersea Power Station, but not for an existing community that's been in desperate need of such for half a century. Hello all, I do hope you enjoyed this video, somewhat bleak and depressing though it was. If you did, I would be grateful if you'd leave a like and perhaps consider subscribing for more. And also be interested to hear your opinions. Which proposal do you think would best serve Thamesmead? Do you have another suggestion that hasn't been covered here? Let me know in the comments. Personally, I find myself wondering if one could build a loop on the DLR by connecting Galleon's Reach to Woolwich Arsenal. Thanks as ever to my generous donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the DLR solution to my costly railway. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio!